Hey everybody, it's Mountain Mike. Welcome back to another episode. Thanks for joining me on the mountain. Today, well, things aren't going right. Yeah, for a few days. Old chainsaw give out on me. Left me hanging. So as you can see in the background here, uh, my sawmill bed is still right where we left it last time. And, uh, we're gonna have to get this saw running to to do a foundation for for it so we can put it in place. Well, while I was at it, I thought I'd do a video on it and uh, see if anybody else needed to uh, to watch somebody do uh, a Steel's MS250 chainsaw um, carburetor rebuild. It's not hard, but it took me a while to take the saw apart just because I'd never taken the saw apart. I've taken it apart, I've cleaned the carburetor, and I put everything back together. I just got my rebuild kit. I put everything back together so I can show you how to take it apart and uh, put it back together, and we'll go through that process. I just, uh, you know, sometimes taking one of these apart is, uh, it's not that hard if you just get shown how to do it. So as I said, this here is a Steel's MS250 not the uh, best chainsaw in the world. Um, I like steels okay. Um, I've had this one a couple years. It's been an okay chainsaw, but uh, I'd like to get a, a bigger, better one. So, just taking the cover off, obviously, you just turn that knob and you pull it out. So here's your air filter, which I need to replace my air filter. And I forgot to order that when I got my carb kit. <laughs> got two 8mm bolts holding it on. Let's take her off. This whole piece just slides off and take your air filter off. You just unclip these pieces on the end here. So now you got the carburetor. You got this breather over here. You want to take it out of the way. And you just pull it out at the top rubber piece and kind of just stick that out of the way there so now you got the choke lever here and to release the rod you just push forward on the lever and it slides right out no big deal so you have to remember the position of the off switch this is your contact and your switch, or I guess it may be the other way, but when you put it into off, which is all the way up, it hits your contact right there. And I didn't pay real close attention to that when I took this apart, and it took me a minute to figure that out. So, you take your switch or your contact off and you push this all the way forward and it'll pop out of its little spot there holding up on this spring while you do it once it pops out you just pull it out of its retaining spot on the opposite side easy stuff so now we need to take the handle loose or the handle cover and it takes a torque bit let's see a T25 I'm going to turn it on its side here Thank you. 
So you just lift out from the back and then it'll pop out in the front. Right there. Yeah, let's see. Alright, so you gotta when you take that off, this is gonna release this here. This spring in your your safety. You want to make sure everything's still there. Just keep an eye on that because you'll need that lined up later. Alright. So the next thing to do <clears throat> is to take the fuel the uh, fuel throttle rod uh, and release it. And it's it's captured by the trigger in the handle. So I'm just going to take some pliers and pry it out of there and try not to mess anything up. Once you get it loose you can turn it clockwise and it'll come right out. Now your carburetor is ready to come off. You just pull out get it off its mounting studs then you can, woo, a little bit of pressure there. I've emptied the gas out of it already, but I guess it had some in the lines. You turn it on its side, it builds pressure. Anyway, you release the gas line. It goes there. That's your choke. That's your throttle. All right, so we got the carburetor off. Now we got to take the uh, bottom and top plate off. Just takes a number two Phillips. So there's the bottom plate off. There's the diaphragm and the gasket. Setting these aside. We won't be needing those. Gasket. I'm not sure what they call that. It may be a, considered a diaphragm too. I should know. Sorry, I do not. So next thing to do. I mean to get all that gas in there. I thought I emptied my gas tank good. Anyway. So the next thing to do. Go ahead and take the needle out. And this is the more tricky part. Just takes number two, Phillips head. You want to hold down with your thumb over the top of it because it's spring loaded. Take that out. Now, when you do it, just release up real slight. And it's got a little spring under there. There's the spring, and there's the needle, right there. All right, so you got your carburetor part, and you're ready to clean it. Now I've already soaked this in acetone, and taken compressed air, and blown the jets out throughout the carburetor. So it should be clean. That's so why I'm a little frustrated about the uh, um, <laughs> the fuel being in there, but it's only been in there for about 10 minutes. I just reassembled this for the video uh, right quick. So we should be fine. Should be all cleaned out. 
So once you've soaked it in acetone and you've blown it out with compressed air, and that's that's key thing. I mean, before you even start, clean it up with compressed air. Clean the air, entire outside and the inside, trying not to blow junk into it, because you'll stop up your jets. Now let's go to rebuild. All right, so this here is the part number. It is three eight dash one six two nine three for this carburetor rebuild kit. It is a Zama carburetor. Uh, hopefully I'm saying that right. But it's a Chinese carburetor. I don't know. I, you know. I haven't had this all very long and I'm rebuilding the carburetor. So what do you, what do you know? But this kit here is made in the USA. So hopefully we'll have a little better luck with it. Who knows? So you're wondering. What do I get in my carburetor rebuild kit? For 11 or 12 bucks, that is. Get your diaphragms and gaskets. Oh, this one's even clear. Then you get your needle. And a screen. So we're going to take all these old parts and put them aside so we don't get them mixed up. So the screen is here. So we're going to take this screen out. Without scratching up the carburetor. You say, what is that screen for? Right there. Well, on the opposite side is your needle. That's your needle and jet hole right there. And the opposite side being your screen. Now, I should have took that out when I blew compressed air through it, and uh, I did not. So we're going to go ahead and proceed with this rebuild. I'm going to take something roughly the size of that center hole. And I'm going to push down. There we go. So we just throw it on there. Centered up best we can, push it in. All right, so we pushed that new screen in, looks good. So the next step is to put, uh, let's go ahead and put this bottom plate on, and get it covered up. So we're going to put the gasket on. And this part, diaphragm, I'm pretty sure that's considered the diaphragm. Also, but please somebody correct me. Alright, so we got those on there. They got a little stud, a retaining stud on each side here. So you know you have it right. You hold it. I'm right handed so I'm going to hold it in my right hand. And you got to pull your throttle lever back because your throttle set screw is a little bit in the way for it to just sit down. So now I got it sitting down I can release that gonna to touch the screw I just pinch them together and put pressure on it and we'll stick the screw back in
All right. Now we got to put the needle in. So the first thing to do is to put your needle in. Now here comes the tricky part. So you got to put the spring in the seat. Assembling this piece. Now, you have this piece ready to go. Your screws here. We're going to go ahead and, since this is magnetic, we're going to put a screw on. Have it ready. Now, you get your spring sitting there. You got to trap it. It's got a little bit of magnetism to it, so want to push the spring around but we got all right so putting the belly on it on this thing here to the low side you want to push it in there and capture your needle and make sure that is in position hold down with your finger and slowly remove the screwdriver now you've got everything captured the way it's supposed to be, making sure the rod in the middle there is in position. You take the screwdriver and put the screw back in. Now, it's time Put this plate back on. Put the gasket on the plate. Put the diaphragm on the plate. It's got a little locking tab in one corner. You can only put it one way. It's the offset hole in the top of the carburetor. So you put your locking tab in that hole, making sure your car your uh, diaphragm and car, uh, gasket are still in line and you're ready to put the screws in. You get them both in, snug them down. All right, carburetor done. Now it's time to bring the saw back over here and put her back together. And hope and pray. All right, got your saw back on the table. You're ready to put the carburetor back on. Grab the carburetor, make sure your two adjustment screws are facing to the right. You go ahead and mount your your gas line to your gas on the carburetor. Mounting the carburetor back on its studs. Pushing it in there. Make sure it's in there good. Gas line's still on good. Everything looks good. So the first thing you really want to do is go ahead and get your you choke, put back together. And when you do that, you gotta lift up on your spring, insert the retained end into its hole till you're under that spring. Let's see. I don't know if that's gonna focus or not, but there's a little tab right there. That's what it rides on, that spring. All right, so you put it under that tab. We're putting it in the retaining hole, 
under the tab and push it all the way in until it lines up with its notch slot and you push it down into it. And you push down, it should pop over that notch in its choke position. All right. So now you know your, your off button is in the correct position. You want to put your contact wire and it just fits in a slot right inside of that the side of this bracket here. So it leaves some exposed right there. And when you turn it to the off position, it makes contact with your spring. Alright, so that's on. You're ready to go forward. Next thing would be your choke rod and we're gonna push the choke lever forward and there's a hole in this bracket here and you just slide it into it and you line that choke lever up with the rod and release it and it's captured. Next we'll take the, the throttle rod and we're going to do the same thing as we did when we took it off in opposite. You're going to find that hole on the throttle lever and you're going to turn it counterclockwise and you're going to line it up with this notch here in the trigger. Again, being gentle not to break the plastic because everything's plastic in the notch. So now you have throttle, you have choke, you have on and off. Got to put the the breather back in. Now when you put the breather back in, it's got these holes for your adjustment screws. And you want to just slide this bottom one on that bottom adjustment screw. And oh, we popped out our bracket. All right, so you just slide it over that, and then it kind of has a, a retaining uh, slot inside the saw here. And when you get it all lined up, it goes in there. <laughs> all right. So now the next thing to do would be to put your handle cover back on. That's easy enough. Slide it back under the the retainers in the top the front of it make sure your safety comes out and push it down there get our torque 25 wasn't that what it was let's see yes torque 25 We're going to put it back in there. You might want to hold down on that as you do. Okay. You got your air filter housing and we're going to put that back on. Just slide it on the studs. And they don't leave you much. Make sure it's all pushed down. 8 millimeter nut.
Tighten them until they're snug. Just like snug. Put your air filter back on. And your cover. And it just slides down, pops in. And turn that there knob and you have just rebuilt the carburetor of the MS250. All right, so we've got the carburetor rebuilt. I'm gonna go get me a little gas and put it in there and give her a test run. Hopefully we're back in business when we get this sawmill out of my shop. Till next time, I'm Mountain Mike. Thanks for joining me out on the mountain. Y'all have a good one.